Hi. Welcome, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Uh, were you expecting to see me or somebody called David? I'm, I work for Hargs. Uh, we are a market leading company that design and develop and um, install all kinds of different recreation facilities. Um, I've worked for Hogs with Hogs SMP for about 20 years. Uh, my job has been and kind of continues to be working with the general public and kind of working with our design teams um, to create those proposals and to kind of see things come to fruition. So today I'm just really here to inspire you. I think there's been quite a lot of talk about policy today and I'm just here to show you some case studies and some ideas. Um, and hopefully just to give you some inspiration as to kind of how to do stuff and to see some real stuff that's happened on the ground. In putting together the case studies that I've got for you today, I've got three of them. Um, when I was selecting them, I was really conscious to look for projects that meet some of the principles that Sport England have set out in their Active Nation white paper. So as I describe some of these projects to you, you'll probably see how some of these um, principles of active, active design uh, link in to the, obje the objectives that Sport England have got. I guess, like I just said, you know, conferences like this can often really focus on, on policy. Um, I'm here very much just to focus on the practical examples and some of the how of real projects have been developed uh, and delivered um, and are kind of working right now to serve communities. So there's four stages typically uh, that we come across um, in how a project will run uh, and in our experience. Uh, and today I've got three of them to show you. I would say step one of almost anything uh, is the public consultation part. And I don't know how much you guys get involved in that. Um, it's hugely varied depending on <laughs> who's delivering it, where it's being delivered, how it's being delivered. Um, but I guess one of the things to think about is what is the point of it? Um, why bother doing it? Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why actually it's a really, really important part of the beginning stage of a project. Um, it really does, if done well, identify the specific needs uh, and issues that each project and each site and each community has. Um, and you know, for my team to work to a really great design brief, if we haven't got that consultation stuff in place, um, we're working on a much more theoretical basis, and it's much nicer to have real human comments and human data to work to work with. And also, at the beginning of the project, it raises awareness of what you're trying to do, um, and it's a great way of sort of starting off, kickstarting the promotion for a project. The other thing to kind of think about at the very beginning is: um, is it asking or is it telling? Sometimes we're involved in consultation that isn't really consultation, it's actually telling people something that's already been decided. It's really promotion. Um, really great consultation involves people in the, at the asking stage and really kind of gets them involved in the project. So I'll use these three projects to kind of talk you through some stuff that, that we've done. And at the end, if you want to ask me about any of these, then, then do. So the first one um, is a site out in East London called uh, East Thames View. This site was a disused car park, essentially, and a block of garages. Um, it adjoined a public open space. You can see top right there. Um, it's a really urban setting, and uh, there was high-density housing around it, really large mix of different ages and different cultures. Um, they all lived side by side, and the client's brief to us was to create a destination facility for young people. Um, they didn't want a playground. They didn't want a traditional mugger, as we call them, multi-use games area, ball court. They wanted something different uh, that provided multiple sports opportunities for lots of different ages, from 12 right up to adult. All backgrounds, all people groups, both sexes, everyone to be involved. Um, the project scope for us was right from the beginning, so go figure out who the stakeholders are, consult with them, create a brief, um, and, de and deliver it. So we did that by uh, doing a number of different consultations uh, in lots of different settings. We started out with local schools, we went to residence meetings, we talked to the police, with youth clubs, and obviously with the client as well. The questioning at these events raised a lot of issues. It was very interesting, very challenging um, project to work on. A lot of the issues were really quite conflicting with diff different user groups. You can imagine you know, the young people had very, very different ideas of what they wanted, you know, compared with the residents who lived around the site. 
Um, and that process, <laughs> hence my colleague with his hand on his head there, going, what are we going to do? Everybody wants something different. Um, but that led us to a final event um, over what was about a six, seven week period where we got uh, key stakeholders from each of the different groups that we'd been working with to come to one particular seminar event, workshop event, and all work together um, to figure out how they could uh, make some compromises and think about how the design could work for everybody. Um, and that workshop extracted from all parties things that the young people would need to do and to think about when they use the site. Uh, it gave us a really clear direction on the layout and how we'd be sensitive to the residents that lived around it um, and how the, you know, how the user groups would interact once the site was finally built. This um, concept design is something that we often use as a tool for consultation. Um, it's something that, we're, as a design team, we're really re prepared for it to evolve and for it to change. Um, but initially, it was a very useful tool to start talking to people about what could happen, what they liked the idea of, what they really didn't like, which is just as helpful. Um, and initially, the client was really keen for us to include kind of like a real play area, a lot of natural play into this site. That was something that was removed throughout the process. And this design evolved into something that I appreciate it's just a kind of a sketchy technical plan, but actually it shows how the spaces and the surface finishes uh, were divided up in the end. Uh, and also in the end, it was a really quite a simple layout. Um, I guess the complex bit through the process was defining what the key elements were to include in the scheme, where they, should be, where they really should be positioned, and that's really what took the, the time and the effort. So the final design um, included a really important green buffer zone, which was tree planting, shrub planting around the boundary with the adjacent houses. Um, there was quite a lot of wheeled sports activity there. You can see a concrete street course in the foreground. Um, there was also a parkour training facility. There were some features for team play, for active dynamic play. Um, there was a ball sports area. There was actually a really well-used design line uh, that went across the site that links a bus stop and some shops. Um, and that was redirected around the facility and laid down as a formal pathway. And sometimes it's those really small things um, that matter, you know, they matter the most to a community. So we built a new facility that cost in total around about £300,000. Um, that new path probably only cost about 10000 But, you know, both are used equally and appreciated equally. And it was just listening to the people who use that site and know day in, day out, what they want to do there and what they want to go there for and making it work for them. Um, it also includes BMX dirt track. Uh, there's an outdoor gym area there. There's an open space, which is a kind of a dance zone and free play zone. And there's quite a lot of meeting, social uh, seating spaces around the site as well. As I mentioned earlier, having that kind of um, design scope at the beginning of the project is a really helpful tool and I definitely recommend at the beginning of a project working with a really experienced designer I would say that I am one but um, I think the, the benefit of that is having a kind of a concept design uh, at the start can really help kickstart kick start discussions even if it generates comments about what people don't want sometimes that's just as helpful and just as useful to have that information and it helps to promote the project and aware the awareness of the project also, it really helps people who are not used to interpreting technical plans. They can visualise what's being, what's being planned or maybe what their options are. The second project I wanted to show you is up in Staffordshire. So this is quite a different site. Um, it's on a typical 1980s, 1990s housing estate. Um, just to put the context of this open space into the kind of the wider setting, there's about 20 really small playgrounds nearby for young children to use. Yeah, I'm sure you've kind of all seen the sort of things, these little pocket parks that are dotted around housing estates with a swing and a slide and a springer in them um, for small children. They're not particularly inspiring, um, but this was the only sort of open green space uh, nearby on this estate, and it was really a destination for dog walkers um, at the time when we started the project. The ground conditions were really challenging as well. It looks there like quite a nice, flat, open green space. Um, but it wasn't. It was just full of leftover builders' rubble and material. Um, it's got multiple drains and manhole covers. Uh, there's an electricity substation on site. 
Um, and it also had loads of Japanese knotweed and mare's tail on it. So <laughs> and from a construction and kind of planning point of view, we kind of had our work cut out. But again, with this project, we were engaged at the very beginning um, to start with consulting the, the stakeholders around the site. So we engaged with surrounding residents who were mainly adults, with the parish council, with the police, but also the intended users. And we did this in a number of different ways. Um, we did it on site, we did it in school, we did it via the internet and by people being able to do uh, text message response, responses to us as well. And we leaflet dropped all the houses um, nearby about 300, I seem to remember, which is a lot of letterboxes when you're walking around them all. The consultation itself threw up um, quite a number of specific issues. So for this particular site, the residents were really concerned uh, about the road that formed the main boundary. They were really concerned about the proximity to their own homes. So you can imagine if you bought that house three years ago with this big green open space, and then someone says, oh, we're going to build a rec facility for young people. The residents were going, ah, you're doing what? <laughs> We want to know about this. Um, it was really flat and really boring, so it wasn't an interesting site at all. It wasn't particularly inviting, other than for the dog, dog walkers to go around. Um, and the other feedback that we got was actually the adults, as well as the young people, were really keen to use the space, and they really wanted to be engaged and kind of create a real community space. Um, so that was a really positive outcome for people to say, we want to be part of this, we want to come and use it. If it's for older children and adults, then that sounds great. Um, so that was, that was a really kind of nice starting point. So we took all of that feedback um, and started out with a, a kind of a development plan for the project. Um, and this design ad addressed some of these key issues. So one of the things that we made sure we included was a 15 metre buffer, like a green buffer for many homes. We put in new tree planting and screening between the houses as a sort of a soft boundary, and that creates a lot more interest and shade and biodiversity for that site. We put in bunding and shrub planting to make it more interesting visually, but also creates more of a kind of community garden feel. Um, then we were quite careful with the fencing to fence off the kind of the zones that might attract children, if you like, or young people from, from the busy road. Um, but we also created a designated dog walking route around the site so that that wasn't completely kind of abandoned and people could still go there and do that. And by keeping that there, we've kind of got informal surveillance of the play and sports areas so you don't end up with these kind of hangout zones where people are completely unseen and they're just causing the residents issues. The dog walkers are welcome, as are the rest of the communities to kind of go and use the rest of the rest of the site. So that's actually reducing the kind of potential antisocial behaviour that might have happened there. Um, and that really put the residents' mind at rest that, that that dog walking would still be allowed around the outside of, of the site the clients dealing with the invasive plants themselves. One of the things we don't do is Japanese knotweed. <laughs> so this is uh, the CGI that we created after the consultation events to present our proposed ideas back to the community and back to the client. You can see the design is actually pretty simple. Um, the main activity is just located in the centre of the space. It's furthest away from the homes and the gardens. Um, and the combination of open spaces and planting and equipped zones just really welcomes the whole community. The other thing that we did at this site was just to level and stone pick and re-turf quite a big square area so that kids could just go and informally kick about and play football there because the ground was so poorly kind of made up and undulating. You, you certainly couldn't walk around easily on site, let alone run around and kick a football. So that was just another thing that was quite uh, important to have this kind of free space that was really, really usable. And this is a photograph of the almost completed site on a winter's day, looking a little bit bleak, probably looks better on a summer's day, um, and showing the new equipped spaces. Um, the tree and the shrub planting was just yet to go in, uh, and obviously the trees in the background aren't, aren't yet in leaf. Um, but you can see, you can get a feel for kind of the different cross-section of the community who are using that space, and it's working really well as a community space by a lot of different age groups, which is exactly what we, what we wanted to achieve. The third project um, that I want to show you is quite a large multi-use sports and games area um, in Finch Hampstead, which is in south of England, Berkshire. We partnered with Working and Borough Council on this project to develop um, an innovative sports and games destination location. 
and this was to complement um, the existing Finch Hampstead Baptist Church facility, which is next door, called the FBC Centre, which is a real community centre. It's got a cafe, uh, as well as being a church. And then also on this site, there's a large play space, there's parking, um, and a lot of open green space as well. So it is quite a destination location for the community. And the project aims here were to tackle in inactivity, to encourage community spirit, to promote the practice of different sports for all ages and all abilities. And the client, which was Woken and Borough Councils, their main priority was to make families feel welcome here. So we were very conscious in designing this that it was for all generations, all abilities. It wasn't a destination for teenagers or for adults particularly, it was for, for everyone. And that intergenerational play is something that we really had to think about. How do young children play with their grandparents? How do you know, all kinds of different cross-sections of different people play together. And through the consultation and engagement process, we worked with uh, a local neighbourhood action group, uh, Finch, Finch Hampstead, it's a bit of a mouthful, Finch Hampstead Parish Council, um, and some other community representatives, including Thames Valley Police. So one of the things this site doesn't have uh, is a boundary around the outside, a kind of a physical... Uh, fence or physical boundary around the whole facility. It's really deliberately opening all the different zones are really inviting. People can flow through the spaces rather than being segregated off. But there's quite a lot of seating incorporated, although to be fair you can't see it in this photograph, but that also contributes to it being quite an inclusive environment. It means that people with low fitness levels can sit down after they're exercising, um, they can have a break in between sessions uh, and just feel more comfortable visiting with other family members. The open plan design also allows for natural surveillance, so adults can easily see what's going on. And the project features here absolutely loads of different sports zones to suit all kinds of people. So there is five, seven or 11 five-a-side football kickabout areas, um, kickabout zones, ball accuracy practice zones. There's a cycle or running track right around the outside. There's table tennis, there's seating, games tables, uh, and a tennis area. And some of the key features that the client was really keen to make sure that we included um, in terms of easy to look after and easy ownership were having one big area of hard standing is really easy for them to mechanically sweep. It's a really boring thing, but it just makes their life easy on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the things we're really conscious of is designing these spaces that are pretty easy to look after. Um, we're very aware that local authorities have got very small maintenance budgets, so these have to be sustainable for them. That also provides for the users and all seasons, all weathers access. So it doesn't matter what the weather's been like, they can go there, they can use it. They're not going to get wet and soggy and muddy by having to run around on the grass. And uh, the robust kit there has got pretty much a lifetime guarantee on everything. So that's something that the client kind of really took peace of mind from. Some of the really positive outcomes of this project um, have been engagement and use by nearby schools. Reading Football Club are not that far away and they've been organising some free public training sessions held here. There's a programme locally called Shine, which is for the over 60s, um, and they've been looking at ways that they can use the site to engage some of their members in um, more active programmes that they're putting on. And children and young people and families in general coming more to this FBC centre to use the broader facilities. So in terms of connecting up um, the co you know, the co-location of community facilities this one's been a real kind of real positive outcome from that perspective. And in terms of those Sport England 10 principles of, of active design, it really ticks that box for activity for all, the co-location of facilities part, uh, the kind of networking of multifunctional space. Um, the client does describe it and the, and the users describe it as a really high quality space. Uh, and the ongoing management and the maintenance of it is, is well planned. I've got a little video to show you me just a moment to make sure I can make this work of ah. this always works when you 
test it 25 minutes ago and now won't work. I can't get it to go over this to this screen. Oh, there we go. Left is right and right is left. Thank you. Three, two, one. We had got planning permission for a some years ago, but hadn't got the funding. Uh, and then we put together a package. It was a fantastic way it came together because at first it was going to be one big court, yeah. predominantly fenced off, locked up, and used by organised teams. And we couldn't get the funding for that. And we which is very little, it was just going to be a square of tarmac. Um, but because we got some designs working with Hearts, um, we were able to then use those designs to get further funding, and it snowballed from there. So it was putting together that funding that made it all possible, and, and then developing from little sort of the enclosed tennis court-like arrangement uh, to something as exciting and big as this. recreation ground past a huge play area and just all the, the logistics of that and it worked very very well and um, I think you'll know yourself as soon as you took the fencing down it was mobbed on the first day. And we've had some great feedback from parents so there was one mother came and said that her son was cycling around the cycle track for five hours. See the way they've embraced it, it was really very encouraging. I think the key to the success of all those three projects was that they were all designed specifically for that location in collaboration with the stakeholders. Um, so while we can make off the, we do make off the shelf products most of the time, those are tweaked and augmented and bespoke for the location, certainly in terms of layout and the way that a site is planned, that would be very much in collaboration with the stakeholders. Um, and I think the other thing is that we and our clients on all these three projects didn't set, kind of set out with a set agenda ourselves. We knew that we needed to provide a facility for the community, but we didn't kind of have a list of, well, therefore it will have this, this, this. We were very much led by the feedback from the community and by the stakeholders on what it must or mustn't include. And I think also each location gives children and young people and adults the choice about what they want to do there. Um, so they can play, they can move at their own pace. They can do things in a really unstructured way if they want to. Um, and that's quite different from what people often encounter at sports clubs or in schools. So I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration, some kind of on the ground, real things that get done, get built. I'm a practical person, so that's why I just wanted to show you things that we're doing, that we're building every day. Um, and hopefully a bit, you know, giving you a little bit of confidence that with the right people involved in your project from the start, it's actually pretty easy to deliver great things for the community. We'd love to talk to you a little bit more. If you want to talk to us, then please do. I've tried to keep it short and sweet because I feel you might be a little bit seminared out. <laughs> um, but yeah, come see us in the exhibition area or if you want to have a chat now about anything or ask me any questions, then do. Come say hello, pick up a brochure, tell me about what you're trying to do. Love to talk to you about community engagement, designing stuff, building stuff, making it happen on the ground. Thank you for your time.